Welcome to Club IDIC. Tonight, we are going to be watching The Child from Star Trek The Next Generation, and we are going to be discussing journeys into motherhood. Please enjoy this meeting. How are you? Uh, <clears throat> I. How are you? I, I heard you the first time, dear. I'm sorry. Uh, well, I'm okay. No, getting ready for Mother's Day. Yeah. Have having to deal with being stereotyped by people. Usual thing. Stereotypes. Yeah, like I don't know. Some people I, I, I'm Facebook friends with kind of act like they have the monopoly on rock music. Okay. People think because of my name that I, I, I must be listening to hip hop, which I don't. Okay, that makes no sense, but whatever. Yes. How are you? I'm used to that from you. <laughs> so, how have you been last time? I'm all right. I don't know. I've got a I've got a weird thing about Mother's Day. Uh, I know about your mom and your dog. My mom's fine. She's alive. I personally have a weird thing about Mother's Day, and I've just ever since I got diagnosed with endometriosis, I've had a weird thing about Mother's Day. Yes. But you know, I'm, I'm not the only one with it. I know, since you can't be a mother yourself. It, it's I'm, but here's the thing, though, Anthony. I'm not the only one who has this. But there are other ways to be a mother besides giving birth. There are other ways that people can experience motherhood besides having children. Like for a long time, they can literally look after children, have them in their lives for a little while, or they can influence children's lives for good. Yes, I know this is your child right now, kind of. Yeah. Like, this is kind of what Deanna did in this episode. She influenced the child's life for good. She watched it grow, gave it knowledge and love, and then said goodbye. And that's why I picked this episode for today. Of course. Mm. Oh. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Not in a while, no. Really? Really? Oh, that's shocking. It's a beautiful, it's a sad but beautiful episode. It was also Deanna Troy's first child, if you will. Like, this is, De yeah, nobody really ever talks about this I, child I, again. Yeah, of course, she's a mother in, in the Titan books. I know, but that comes much, much later. And again, in season three of Star Trek Picard, they, they say she and Riker had a son. Yeah, they had a son and a daughter. Because the son was older than Kestra. Thad was older than Kestra. But this is, we're going way back to Deanna's first experience first journey into motherhood, even though it was for a very short while. She still gave love and teaching and influenced this child for good. And this child influenced this lovely, lovely human being, this, hum this human and beta woman for good, because that's what children do to the mothers who raise them, is influence their lives for good. So... Okay, so what are you doing Sunday? I, I already had my Mother's Day meal with my mother. I took her to an Arby's and I bought her, her and my stepdad food and yeah. What? I, I'm just thinking, he's like sitting you there, looking at your mom, nom, 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 nomming on. Like well, she enjoyed herself. It's something simple, like she's going to have surgery in June, so 
It's foot surgery. She's not being put out. She's not being knocked out. Local anesthesia, I reckon. I know. So, yeah. But... Well, I'm hosting my family Sunday. So I know, I know tomorrow, I have to spend tomorrow preparing my place for that. <laughs> And Italian yes. gatherings are always fun, I'm gathering. <laughs> lots of food, lots of family, right? <laughs> you. That's what I gather. So what you try doing for the dog? Uh, my mom buried him in her yard and put poppies over the grave. Uh, oh, what is wrong with me? I just, I just remember now, your dog cannot participate in Mother's Day. It passed last month. Yeah, oh, that's okay. The dog, I felt, was like my child because I had raised it from six weeks old. It was in my life since I was like 20 years old. And so it basically was, and that's okay. And it, I was also, when I was thinking about this, I was also reminded of how I used to do respite, weekend respite for a little boy with severe disabilities. He would come over to my house and I would look after him over the weekend and give his mom a break. And his mom had some, she was violent. And I was, you know, there were times I wanted to adopt this little boy, but I myself wasn't in much of a better situation. So I didn't have the resources and I always regretted it. I know if you could, you would. Oh, definitely. Because he, I was able to communicate with this boy and get him to do what he needed to do. He quite often listened to me because I was very loving, but I laid down the law. But over the years, I, I was able to also care for children and teach them through my church. And I wanted to go to school for child care, but, you know, try facing a college and say you have a disability and how your neurodivergency comes across to them, they may not respond positively to that enough to let you into their programs. Oh, you were, so you're afraid that your no, neurodivergency I've been told is that. a flag to them. I've been told that. How I came across to them made them question whether or not I was fit. So I just looked after children where I could through volunteering at children's events and babysitting and respite and teaching through my church. Because I'm not too flawed to look after children in the eyes of God or in the eyes of the community, just in the eyes of an education system that is so severely flawed itself. Well... It's not, not exactly better down here. Well, I know the education system is flawed everywhere, but... Okay. So, I, I, know much, I remember you going on. I, 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 remember, I remember this. You going on about me being a dad. Okay, so... Okay, you want to be a mom, right? Oh, I'm even willing to be a stepmother or adopt or something like that. Yeah, but well, let me throw this at you. Could could you would you be willing to get up at two in the morning if your kid is reporting night terrors? Yes, that is the job of a parent. Okay, and if if you had a teenager who came home at two in the morning, then what? You know what? When I used to go out and do things with friends mm -hmm. as a teenager, even after I turned, even when I was 17, close to 18, my mom would always wait up for me. So why wouldn't I do the same for my child or stepchild? Right. Even though I'd be like, you're grounded for a week. 
Well, no, if they weren't, if they, if I knew where they were and what they were doing, and as long as they were being responsible. Right. If they were communicating to me what they were doing, if they were open with their communication, there wouldn't be a need to ground them because I knew what they were doing. And if they lied, then what? Well, then they would have to take responsibility for their actions. Mm -hmm. And? <laughs> it would have to be a hard lesson, but it would be a lesson I'd have to teach them. It's my point exactly. So people, people think, oh, I'm going to have a child. It's going to be a lot. It's not a fantasy. It's not family. a fantasy. I know the realities of having a child, but I love them, and I teach them. I wouldn't abuse them, but I'd be very loving but firm about. Okay, if you want to make certain decisions, here's the responsibility that comes with these decisions. Right. If you want to act like an adult, you're going to get treated like it, and if you're going to misbehave, there's consequences that come with misbehavior, both young. Consequences and consequences for if you're older. If you misbehave as an adult, you don't get the same tender mercies as you do as if you were a kid. Well, around here, you act like a, a young child acts, does things that are heinous. They end up in juvenile detention around here. Well, that's, that's expected because it's a big city and the criminal justice system is overwhelmed and people are burnt out and they don't exactly have tender mercies to give. I, I understand that. Yeah, yeah. Ouch. Everybody abuses the system to the point where the courts have no more spoons to give any mercy. They're like, oh, you know what? We're not dealing yeah. any more compassion out. We're just going to toss everybody into overcrowded prisons and we're going to be... Blaming the parents yet again. And yeah, well, granted, I suppose yeah. going to have to reach, to reach out to the kid when they're young. Because oh, I, I tell you, I, I don't have children of my own. But me being within a kilometer of a high school, oh, mm -hmm. dear. I have to have those high school kids like every, every afternoon around 1,400 local time. They get out of school, they hit up every fast food joint in a kilometer radius. And I remember one time they were crowding in the park where the police had to come and tell them to disperse. And yep, yeah, they want to be grown ups so badly. How do you remind them you, ha you haven't gotten there yet? Well, so me, I'm throwing this at you to see how much of a mother you'd be. Show them the consequences of trying to behave in an irresponsible adult manner. Take them on a tour of a police station. Take them on a tour of a place where irresponsible adults go, because you can arrange those things nowadays. Scared straight program. Pretty much. Because all the talking in the world isn't going to do any good, really, because teenagers sometimes refuse to listen. But if you show them, this is where you're going to end up if you don't straighten up. Perhaps it will get through to them. Yeah. But if you do it with love, if you if you pretty much scream at a teenager and tell them they're nothing but a worthless troublemaker, it's not going to get through to them. It's going to entice them to be more of a bad person. It's going to entice them towards more bad behavior. But if you do it in a calm sense, if you do it in a loving sense, if you say, I still love you despite the bad things you've done, but here's the consequences of these behaviors and you should change before you have to face these real world consequences because I'm showing you compassion but the real world isn't going to show you the same compassion okay well the, whether that works or not for me it's like a 50 50 deal I know but we're from two we were we grew up in two different worlds and I wasn't shown as much compassion as I probably could have been by the real world. So I am determined to try and show compassion. Yeah. And try to get more people to click on going, but that's a whole different thing. It has nothing to do with tonight. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. That's why I said. So, yeah. Well, I can't I quite. I, there's some things I, I say about motherhood I will never know because I'm male. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. Some people don't have mothers and all they have in a mother figure is a father. 
Uh, I'm not a seahorse, dear. A father can be a mother figure as well, and that's all some people have, and they grow up perfectly well. You know, this reminds me, like I said, I was looking at a newspaper. They had a little comic strip of little baby seahorses. Follow, look at the big seahorse, and they say, Happy Mother's Day, Dad. Well, there's nothing wrong with that because some. Uh, hey, you know, you know, like the seahorse, right? I don't. They put the, they put the babies in, in the father seahorse, and he has to walk around with those things, swim around with those things, and birth them himself. Which I'm thankful I'm, a, I'm not a seahorse, I'm a primate, and I don't have to go through the birthing process because I'm a male. Uh, females having that thing kicking you inside and then squeezing it out. I hear it feels like a like a semi ran over your crotch if you gave birth. Um, yes. But, I mean, I think anyone is capable of loving... Another. I think anyone is capable of loving and raising a child. And I think a child needs anyone who is capable of loving and raising it. My thing is, are you up to the challenge? Yes. Because in one of my previous jobs, I had to work with like incarcerated teenagers. Well, actually it was a psych ward full of teenagers. And unfortunately at the jail, although they had mothers at all, because they all had the jail mindset. Yes, the jail Being mindset them is quite difficult. Jail. The jail mindset comes when they feel they've got nobody in their corner. They have to fight through an angry, uncaring, unforgiving world because they feel they've got nobody in their corner to care about them or stand up for them. So they have to learn how to stand up for themselves. And in the process, they lose all that's good about them to the world. And so that's why they get the jail mindset and eventually go to jail or the psych ward. They become desensitized to anything that they might get through the raising of a parent. Yeah, and that's as far as I'll go over that because of HIPAA laws. Yeah, no, but I, it's I rather sad. Talking. I mean, so many kids need good, stable raising and they don't get it because people forget to care. People just say, oh, it's all about me. Well, when you have a kid, it's not exactly all about you anymore. You need to care about that kid. Yeah, yeah. So and I always ask these people, are you up to the challenge of having kids? Because I know some people who plan their kids. They think it's a cute thing that they can put on Instagram or other social media. Yes, oh, yes, I'm pregnant. Can... I'm going to buy this thing for my kid or this, and I'm going to get these government grants. But a child is a living, breathing response. Yeah, when that thing starts crying every, every half hour, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, I pooped on myself. Oh, the cat scared me. It's, it's like the last verse of the Freddy Krueger song. Nine, ten, you'll never sleep again. Yeah. And it's just that people need to take it seriously if they choose to have a child because it is an enormous responsibility and not everyone is up for that. And I mean, in this episode, Deanna comes to be pregnant and she realizes it's an enormous responsibility and everybody else is against it, but she's like, it's my body. I'm going to decide to have this baby. Yeah. And, and then suddenly everybody's like, oh, you know what? She's right. It's her body. She can decide to do what she wants. Yeah. Well, Star Trek has been, is known for dealing with thorny issues. And then, you know, she is what Deanna Troy is one of the most responsible people on the ship, if not the most responsible. She's able to reason with everybody and help everybody see beyond their anger and their other emotions that stop them from making responsible decisions. Right, right. And she works, she's not experienced or prepared for motherhood in the least bit, but she works to become prepared for it in the short time she has. Well, that, well, it is a short time, a 60-minute show. 
which I won't admit, like you think it's gonna be like uh, like it is on TV, no way. Cause you got you have to live with your offspring for at least the next 18 years. Well if not the, probably the next two decades if you were to have one. Well, whatever lifespan a child gets, you have to live with them and you have to love them and you have to care for them and you have to remind them constantly that they are of worth, of infinite worth, and you have to treat them as such and give them whatever opportunities they can to succeed and thrive in the world for however long they are there. Okay. All right. And so since it's been a while since you've seen this, would you like to go see it now? Well, is, is nobody here but us hens? Mm, no, afraid not. You're stuck with me. Right. Oh, okay. Um, TNG, the child, right? Yes. Time go look this up and see catch you in an hour. I believe it is uh, season two. Yeah, hold on. I got, I got to type this type the thing in. The because we've got a new it's season two episode one okay season two episode one i'm gonna look that, i'm looking that up now see season two da, 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 da. oh season two episode one all right mute me please how do i do that oh see you in an hour Hi. You know, I think the best thing for those who can't have children, I think the best thing they can do is to really put themselves in experiences that will allow them to have a taste of parenthood, like volunteer with kids, teach, teach children at their church, babysit, give themselves a taste of that so that they can at least have those parental feelings. Mm. You know, oh. I think he might be back. Hello, Don. Hello again. Just um, so you know, we are recorded and we're discussing the child now, as we are before. All right. Are there other other people here? No. Yes, there's Anthony Perez from New York, and my name oh. is Captain Heather Lee Cameron, and I live in Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada. Okay. Well, I watched the. Uh, uh oh, my! I have some background noise here. I got to turn off. That's all right. Anyway, what did you think? Well, let me see. Evil alien threat aside, that was like a Cliff Notes version of life. Well, I don't think it was an evil alien threat as much as it was an innocent alien wanting human experiences 
that they needed it at a corporeal form for. Right. Like not all aliens are bad. They just are innocent and don't know how to go about exploring life the right way or in their current form. So they need a little bit of help. Put it that way. Okay. Okay, it's like, okay, like, hold on a second. Let me, let me get your baby food. Oh, I, I turn my back, turn around. You're already on solids. What? <laughs> okay, is this, am I going to be a parent? Can you at least let me catch up with you before you start hitting puberty? Well. I, I, I don't know. It's like basically the way, the way the alien was going, by the time I went to the bathroom, he'll be already applying for college. I think the alien was like sort of like a good version of Trelane. He had a concept of humanity, but he didn't know how humanity was supposed to progress. He wanted to just understand the stages in development and have a, have a taste of what it was supposed to be like, but not at the pace that humanity went. Yeah, okay. And like I said before we screened the episode, he had to live eight years of life in an hour. Well... That he didn't know that eight year, maybe eight years was a, at a different pace than than an actual than an actual human lived. Eight years could have been like a moment for him compared to our time. True. All right, but the thing is, right when everybody was like telling her, "Okay, I don't want, I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to be careful how I steer this conversation," but you know how Troy was adamant that okay, this is my kid, I'm keeping this. Picard, Worf, shut it. Well, it's like everybody was discussing what Troy should do with her body when Troy owned her body. That's it. Yeah, what do you bond. think, Don? You bond. have something to say. There's a bond there. And a mother, a child is part of the mother, I guess. Something like that. Yeah. Even though, but well, yeah, it's like trying to uh -huh. Talking about bonding, right, with the child, even though that's the only time in history I've ever seen a, a, a birth that did not feel hor horrid for the mom's part. Well, I guess maybe in a sense it was also a kind of adoption because this life form adopted Deanna as the carrier that would bring it into the world. Yeah, to put it that way, it's an interesting way of looking at it. And basically chose Deanna to be its parent. And, you know, I'm an all in favor of adoption, especially considering my personal circumstances. And, you know, people like children who choose their parents, because children have a vibe about parents. They do have a vibe about who would be good for them to be able to develop and grow. Well, it's too bad in the real world. The kid doesn't get to pick its parents. That it is just happens. Bad. The system is so broken that they sometimes put children with parents who aren't necessarily good for them. Yeah, like sometimes the birth parents, like I, I say this about, about um, how you can even fit, retrofit this to a female perspective, but I always say this, any idiot can make a baby, but it takes a man to be a father. That's true. Or in your case, it will take a female to be a to, yeah. Is it any female can have a baby, but it takes a real mature person to be a mom. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Don? Well, I'm trying to figure out what the uh, author or the the person who wrote this, what they were trying to say. Um, but for, for a minute there, I mean, it almost seemed like it was a religious thing, like... Uh, the Immaculate Conception, you know, the... Oh, you mean Mary, the mother of Jesus? Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, but it wasn't. I mean, that isn't what he was trying to say. Um, I don't know. I think that that almost... Uh, like a, a baby is part of you. You know, and um, so it, if it's sick or something, I mean, it's devastating, you know, um, so, but I didn't, you know, I, I didn't understand the, uh, 
the whole thing about the the cargo that they had on the ship, you know? I don't know what that was. Well, about. from what I see, Don, right? Don't mind I call you Don, do you? Oh, no, of course not. So, Don, the way I see it is like, like the virus, the, it's the only time I've seen a virus that wants to know the people who put it in the container. That's, the East, that's why I kept on saying the field is going to breach as long as Choice Kid is alive. Well, thank you, Mommy. Now I know how humans are. <laughs> Bye. I don't know if the if the entity was fully aware of how it was harming people until it realized, oh, you know what, Mommy, I have to go because of, the ship is in danger because of yeah. me. And it was so yeah. devastating to Troy to lose her son, but you know, she realized the entity was grateful for even the little bit of life it had. And she eventually yeah. got over it. She was eventually ready to have more children because then she had that and Kester later far, far down the road. Yeah, well, she already had the experience before it even actually happened. I know, but it took a lot of time to get over because it obvious because it took years before she had that and Kester, and then to lose that. It, it breaks hearts. It breaks hearts. Because, I mean, I don't know if, if you've seen... Have you seen Picard at all, Don? Hmm? Yeah. Have you seen Picard at all? What do you mean? Like, Star I've, Trek Picard? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with that. Yeah, like, I mean... I, have you seen season three? No, I am not an avid fan. Oh. No. Mm. Well, just to lose lose two out of three children and they're still standing they are a very formidable couple and mm. they struggle with that loss so much and to lose two out of three children for Deanna it had to have weighed on her so heavily and then oh yeah the events of Picard they actually go into it more I won't dwell on that too much but I highly encourage you to watch it because they actually go very much in the depth of in depth and conversation of it and but they don't really talk about Ian in Star Trek Picard but you can see it and how Deanna chooses to deal with the death of Thad I'm sure that loss of Ian carries over because she tries to deal with the death of Thad rather poorly and tries to help others deal with their loss of Thad rather poorly and it creates a bit of a shockwave that they have to struggle to heal from And, well, it's, yeah. it's fascinating. I mean, from a male perspective, I mean, what women have to go through, you know, um, it, it, very hard to comprehend. I'm sure glad they go through it, though. <laughs> you know. Um, well, you know, whether it be a child you give birth to or a child that you adopt mm -hmm. out of the system or a child that you foster like there is a, mo a bond between mother and oh, yeah. child anyway even if you just take care of them for a little while through teaching you develop a bond with that child and when that child goes away or dies or moves on to a different stage of life it's a loss like even oh. even when you raise like an animal from babyhood yeah it, there's a bond because I recently lost a pet that I'd had since six oh. weeks old and it just was so awful to get over because I had had the pet since it was six weeks old and it felt like my child and it was just and I've got uh, endometriosis and I had I got diagnosed officially in 2017 and it's a female reproductive condition mm -hmm. And it's, it just felt like such a loss because I had such expectations for my life. Like I was going to oh, find man. a man in my 20s and have at least 10 children. I used to write about this uh -huh. in my church, wow. yes, Anthony 10. And I used to write, I had names picked out in my uh -huh. journal that I wrote in high school. And I wanted to have a big, beautiful family and well, do you do you have any kids, any children? No, I'm not even married, and I'm 35. Well, don't worry about it. You know, no, but that 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 actually it can still happen. No, it won't, because you see endometriosis. I know, I know that, but you could adopt. 
I can. Yeah. But the doctor said to get off the try and get off the medication to try and have a child would make me severely ill. So it's not no, happening you know, that way. Uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Well, he said adopt. Yes, I, I try to have it all in spite of everything. I could adopt, but my religion doesn't really encourage people to adopt singly. Yeah. I'm not familiar with that. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, they encourage families, and I would like to have a family, whether it be through adoption or fostering or stepmotherhood. Hmm. Or you could, I mean, you can kind of adopt... Uh, another family i mean we have close association with other people who have kids yes you become kind of a, a parent parental figure i guess yeah yes i i mean that's kind of what Troy was i mean she gave birth but she was sort of chosen to be the parent for a little <laughs> while mm -hmm. And she developed a bond and the child was only in her life for a short season, but she got the experience of being a mother. Yeah. Yes. It's hard to imagine you know, science fiction, I mean. Yes, and thinking, considering Heather's background, mm -hmm. the whole idea of an immaculate conception. <laughs> That's very biblical. Exactly. So basically, this episode was a Bible tale in space. It was. It, it, it actually sounds it interesting. It, it and I do it. believe in the biblical story. If, if, if people don't, that's okay. That's their right. Mm -hmm. And I respect people's rights to their beliefs. But, yeah. But it's very interesting that again that people tried to dictate what Deanna should do about the situation when it was Deanna's right to decide oh, yeah. what to do about the situation given that the situation was with her body yeah and and the way other people are talking as though she isn't there you know? well we they should just abort the time you know and it, I mean the struggle, the constant struggle that women are facing towards the right to control their own bodies everywhere in the world. Yeah, and that's a grim reality. I'm not sure about all the laws, but I know that women are constantly fighting for the right to control their own bodies. Shouldn't be that way, but it shouldn't. I mean, there are there are places where you know children are forced to have kids or, uh, you know it's hard to believe some cultures are very they for, they force people to do just about every every conceivable thing i think women should have the say over what happens oh, yeah. on bodies because people they own their bodies yeah they need to have an understanding of how their body works and how their body is supposed to work and what options they have with their body and they should have if they have the brain capacity that's a very important thing like if they're able to understand their body and be able to make decisions for the body because that's an important thing because if you lack the capacity to understand that's another entire different thing hmm. uh, that could be an argument for an extended family or you know uh, but as long as they don't use that capacity argument to justify abuse. Well, you know, pe people, it, well, it's like it takes a village to raise a child, you know. As I long mean, as I, the village is loving, I'm totally yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we need to regain a sense of uh, community. A lot of... A lot of that was lost around, I know when I was a, a kid, um, communities were kind of very fragmented, you know, people weren't friends with their neighbors and that kind of thing. Um, I mean, some people were, but not where I grew up. Yeah, people have forgotten to care. About one another because it's hard to care it's inconvenient mm -hmm. to care 
And God forbid people get pushed out of their comfort zones if they care about somebody else, right? Yeah. Well, I, I, I feel differently about like the disability community. Mm -hmm. I think people in the disability community care more um, because well, they've experienced cruelty usually, you know. So they care. They don't. They don't want that to happen to other people. I agree. I've experienced that personally. Yeah. Yeah. I just. Um, I want life to be more fun. <laughs> you know. Yes. Yeah. People shouldn't have to struggle. Well, Don, let me tell you something. I grew up in a home where my father basically stopped loving me the moment he found out I was different and I wasn't oh. treated well. Because yeah. I was different, but yeah. I don't want to, I don't want others to feel that they are mistakes in life because they're different. I, I think that's and, universal. I, th I think that, uh, well, I feel the same way. I mean, I, I felt different uh, from, from everybody else. And then uh, I had to keep that a secret forever. You know, um, I'm only beginning to face that kind of, you know, that, reality now I'm 71 and uh, mm. I don't like the idea of children um, feeling like they're they're not worth anything it's terrible it's such a silly thing it shouldn't be that way it shouldn't be that way but people just you know it's so hard to be empathetic when People just don't have the patience to understand what is not easy to understand. But you know, Troy, this is like another reason why I picked this. Troy is an, is the epitome of love. She literally yeah. takes the time to understand what is not easy to understand. And she, even though this situation was difficult to understand, she embraced it with all her heart. And she, she said, this is my child. I am having my child. And I love this child with all my heart, even though he is different and everybody's scared of him. Well, she, she's a different kind of person. They have a name for her. I forget what it is. Betazoid. Is that right? Betazoid? She's half okay. Betazoid. All right. Well, are you trying to ask her how I describe her as an empath, you mean? Yes, that's right. An empath. And Marina Sirtis did a fabulous job in this episode. And, you know, it kind of speaks to how she is in a person in real life, at least my experience with her, because, you know, my first experience with Marina, let me tell you this, in 2013, it was my birthday, and I took my mother to an entertainment convention because she was there in, in Lethbridge. Mm -hmm. And when I told her it was my birthday, she's like, it's your birthday? And she ended up giving me and my mother free photos with her because it was my birthday. Oh, nice. Nice. And that ended up snowballing because there was a, a reporter from the Lethbridge Herald there. Mm -hmm. And Marina and I ended up on a page of the Lethbridge Herald two days after my birthday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice when that works out. Yeah. Okay. So she's a very lovely person, much like the character she played for 20 years, 20, 30 years. Yeah, she, you know, I mean, that's, that's like... Uh, that's her character is supposed to be empathetic. I mean, it's a characteristic of of that, what you said, beta soy, uh, characteristic of that kind of person. And she's been through so much crap recently with the loss of her husband and everything. And it's just, she still finds time to be kind. She still finds mm -hmm. time to be compassionate. Yeah, you got to, I think you, we all need to do that. We all need to do that. Mm -hmm. I feel I feel sorry for people who become bitter as a reaction to that stuff. You know, it's a mistake. <laughs> you know, be, being uh, bitter or negative, that kind of thing, it doesn't help anybody. You're not. Yeah. You're, you can't really get back at people. You're just, you're just becoming the problem, you know. And another mother figure I think we should honor in this episode, who's who's not there, but mentioned is Dr. Beverly Crusher. Because uh -huh. her son, we see her kindness in her son. We see her eagerness for adventure in her son, Wesley. Oh, that's who, right. Who is supposed to be leaving the enterprise, but doesn't yeah. want to because and he's he going to love it. Yeah. You said that he belongs here. Yeah. 
And, you know, he, I remember when he first came to the Enterprise, he was scared of Picard because Picard didn't like children. <laughs> like Picard never liked children. I don't know if you've read the autobiography of John Luke Picard, have you? I, didn't, that thing come, didn't that book come out in the fall? No, that's the Cisco one. No, no, I mean, oh, I'm, I'm referring to Patrick Stewart's autobiography. Making no, the fall. autobiography no. of John Luke Picard is a fictional book that came yeah, out. Fiction, yeah, fiction. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. okay Patrick yeah. Stewart is a whole other kind of person. Um, I got my hands on a copy of the autobiography of John Luke Picard, and he... Was act, he learned to dislike children because of children of a past superior of his who absolutely disrespected him. I think uh -huh. he was on the Stargazer on a previous ship. And he decided from then on, when he took command, he would ban children from the bridge. <laughs> okay. And when he first took command of the Enterprise, Beverly pretty much brought Wesley onto the bridge and Picard got upset. Yes. But he adjusted. Hmm. But Wesley eventually proved over time his worth to Picard. And Picard eventually made him an acting ensign and allowed him to operate the helm. All right. Yep. And, and in season two, Beverly takes off to work to be the head of Starfleet Medical. And everybody thinks Wesley was going to go with her, but Wesley decides he wants to stay and learn and grow. But he can't find the courage to tell Picard until he talks to Gein. That's Gein, yeah, yeah. The all-knowing bartender. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, Guinan was pretty good at getting people to admit what they were really thinking, even if they didn't want to admit it to anyone but themselves. Uh -huh. Well, she's kind of an impasse. Also. Elorian. A what? Elorian. They're uh -huh. basically um, aliens who can live a really long life and they listen. Ah. Huh. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, if you really want to get technical, Guinan kind of knew Captain Kirk if you watched Star Trek Generations. Uh -huh. Yes, because she led Picard to Kirk. Now, do you, um, Heather, do you, do you do this kind of... Uh, a value, whatever, uh, this kind of event frequently. Yes, I used to do a, 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 I used to do it several times a month, and now I'm doing it once a month, but I may continue doing it more often yeah. if more people show an interest, but I've done at least, I've done over 40 of these. Yes. Well, you know, I'm, um, I'm interested in all of the different formats that exist, and I know, I know that there are a lot of uh, people with autism who are fascinated with uh, uh, Star Trek and that kind of thing. Oh, um, what's his name? Oh, gosh. I'm so bad with names. I believe the next one we're going to be doing is Sons and Daughters from Star Trek Deep Space Nine for Father's Day. Oh, that, oh, good, 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 good. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 I really skimmed through that thing, you know, fast forwarding through it, trying to get the. Did you the, join the, the group? What group? The Facebook group. No, how do I I'll do get that? it for you. I'll post a link in the chat. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just looking at Dawn's background. 
It's very pretty. You're seeing that same bee flying back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> That's my pet the group, bee. The group is in the chat. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, so I'm get uh, obviously probably that's how you get notified about these events as they come up. Okay. And yeah, and yes, Don, we do take suggestions. Yes, yeah. we do. I just lessened the amount of meetings because I'm currently in school for family history research, and it's a very intense program. And I also work, so. Hey, life happens. <laughs> You, do you have do you have no uh, Damon Matthew Wise? I do. He's visited a few times. Ah, okay. But the time difference makes it difficult for him. And now, yeah, that's right. I was. Uh, where are you located? Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada, and oh, Anthony in New York. Alberta. And what time is on Alberta? It's currently 7.43 p.m. here, and it's about, oh, gosh, Anthony, help. Yeah, two, two hours difference. 21, 43 hours here. Two hour difference for me. I'm in uh, Eastern, you know, Boston, New York, that kind of. Okay. Because one of the things I'm, I'm trying to do is uh, find people who, are, who create forums. All right, and that's what this is. You're creating a discussion group about uh, Star Trek, and um, because it, it's a really good way to uh, reach out to people who might otherwise be isolated. You know? Yes. Well, we welcome anybody who is positive thinking and eager to discuss Star Trek in a positive way. Within yeah. reason, of course. Well, positive is an important criteria, I think, because um, there are some people that have been so damaged that yeah. they just can't make themselves be positive. And, well, um, this is a safe space. Yeah, that's right. We're in the business of creating safe places. I agree. And nobody will ever be made to feel ashamed for their opinions. We'll just, we're about uh, education and kindness and unconditional love here. So uh, let's see. Now maybe we can share people who uh, we, we know. There's a woman named Grania who lives in Ireland. Oh, that'd be um, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. She's, 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 uh, she has an interesting hobby or pastime. She's uh, very fond of snakes. Ooh. <laughs> and she's a sweetheart, you know. It's not I like there's anything. Fun. Yeah, okay, there you go. Well, there like when go. I was a child, my family and I visited this little community in Alberta called Drumheller, and they had a reptile thing. And I love just, I loved, I think my brother held a snake, and I... I kind of, I don't remember much about it. I just know he held the snake and I just like taking pictures of snakes. They're yeah. so cool. Yeah, that's, yeah. It, it is a little bit like an, uh, another kind of life form, you know, they're, well, they're, they're not mammals. They're, you know, it's, you have they're to They're still kind of, worthy of love. Huh? They're still worthy of love. Oh, sure. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Even I, I don't know about adopting a pet snake. <laughs> so what we do? Take look it to mass. Uh, my father, wife would kill me. me. My son is a snake. The snake <laughs> is my son. Please don't put the holy water on him. He hates uh, me. Yeah, like some people are snakes. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. We should always be happy to embrace new life forms and allow ourselves the experience of being a motherly influence to those around us, even if it's just for a little while and we shouldn't be sad for mm -hmm. however short those experiences may be. And we shouldn't mm -hmm. be afraid to expose ourselves to those motherly experiences it's, because they allow us to grow. Right. Now you're in Alberta. Calgary is in Alberta. Isn't it? Yes, yes. Because many years ago, I worked um, 
there was a doctor who did a, a program for chronically ill children who, you know, kind of stuck in their beds so that they could reach out to other people around the world using a computer. And uh, that appealed to me. Yeah, I just came up with this idea because I felt like, you know, everybody deserves to have a space where they belong. And because yeah. I struggled to belong in other Star Trek spaces. So I decided to make this space because well, I have a you. place to belong. And I well, just hope. I'll see um, who else I know and um, bring them along with me. Okay. I'd love that. Yeah. We'd love that, wouldn't we? Anthony. What? Oh. We'd love oh. more visitors, wouldn't we, more Anthony? Visitors. You're always asking. Okay. True. Well, can be done. Absolutely. And please be sure to join the group. Did you see the link for the group? All right. I'm in, in the um, chat. Where am I? I think I did. Let me make sure I did. Uh, yeah. Invite. No. Is, is there a word uh, balloon next to participants? There's a little oh, box mean... in the bottom that says chat. Yes, right. I know. Okay. So what do I do? You open I the even... box and it has a link. Uh, well, well, at least we, well, we have somebody besides us. I'm grateful for that. Of course. And we will be watching Sons and Daughters from Star Trek Deep Space Nine to discuss the interactions between fathers and their children. Okay. Is this going to be And how people can have a fatherly influence over children. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we can all kind of be family. I'm a yeah. very strong believer in that. And my my biological father died in 2014, but I have a wonderful stepfather, and I'll we'll touch on that next month. Well, yeah, you don't you don't stuck with the one that's uh, biologically connected. My, well, he my... wasn't biologically good. He wasn't good at all. But oh, oh, yeah, he was my father, and I came to peace with there you how go. he was yeah. as he was dying, and that's how it is. That's an important thing to do. Some people carry a grudge, and that's a terrible thing to do. Oh, it just grudges are, ter are terrible things to hold. And I wrote a, actually wrote a Star Trek piece about how mm -hmm. I came to terms with things like that. I wrote a beautiful piece about that for a Star Trek yeah. publication. Yeah, my, my mother was very thoughtful <laughs> in that way. She, um, we thought she was going to die. So um, we all went to, to visit her. And uh, when all her kids and everybody went to visit her, and she was so happy about seeing everybody that she snapped out of her whatever it was, and she lived another few months, you know. And uh, she, I, I always say, that she flunked out of hospice. You know? <laughs> she said, "Well, damn it, this is for people who are going to die, and if you're not going to die, we're going to kick you the hell out of here." You know? <laughs> So that was a good thing. So I got to say goodbye in a good way. So well, that's that's kind of like Troy. She, she as sad as she was, she got yep. to say a proper goodbye. She got to hold him and kiss him and yep. listen right. to him say thank you for my life. And exactly, the life. very important thing to do. Yeah, how, how many it, kids actually say that? I wonder. Yeah, well, I didn't. Anthony, when my I didn't father have that died, with my father. It was terrible. His. Uh, you know, he died in a VA hospital all, all alone. It was horrible. And my brother actually went to visit him, but he had already died. So that's, that's so terrible. a miserable experience. You go into the hospital or visit somebody and they, they aren't there anymore. That's terrible. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, when when my father died, I it was a, it was Sunday. And I had actually come to bring my mother supper because she was like hanging out there all the time. He was in the palliative room. I had just come to bring my mother supper. I literally was setting the things on the table, the food containers on the table. I looked over at my father's bed and I, all of a sudden I saw his breathing change. 
Like oh. it was going slower and slower yep. and slower and slower. And then all of a sudden it stopped. And I was in the room when he died. I literally was in the room when he died. Well, in an odd way, that's a blessing, I think. It is a blessing because I got to see him. I got to say goodbye. And then I sat on the, the couch in the room for half an hour and cried before I was able to drive home. And it was yeah. raining when I drove home. And that morning, I had some weird experiences that I felt like, oh, is something going to happen today? <laughs> Well, you got to share a very important experience in his life. So it's very valuable. And he died on a Sunday, which is interesting. That's very a holy day. Sunday's yeah. a holy day in my religion. Yeah. So now, uh, so you're in Canada. Do you, I'm wondering, I mean, if all the people who live in Canada, right? You, you know, no, no, right? But, um, by any chance, do you know Yvonne Spicer? No, I'm afraid not. Okay, she, she, she has autism. And she wrote a book. That's her book. My Life, My Choice, My Future. And um, it's very nice. She's from London, Ontario. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, she, she's, she's great. I always wanted to go back to Ontario because I was there when I was 17 performing in Ottawa with a show choir. Huh? What was that? I was in Ottawa when I was 17. I performed with a show choir in various places, including for the Governor General at the time oh, okay. in 2005. A a choir. Okay. Yeah, choirs are cool. Very nice. It was like a musical theater type thing where we sang and we danced and... And the whole my life, my choice thing actually resonates with the episode because ultimately Ian came to be because Deanna decided, oh, this is my life. I'm mm -hmm. choosing to have this baby regardless of all of your objections. And I'm yep, going to that's right. have the say. I own this. I'm in charge of this. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what was and I will say this. It is the realm of fiction because who else did it live as a baby? Having an armed security detail watching. <laughs> well, I didn't know, you know, what was going to be born. It could have been. God knows. I don't know, like a two-headed thing with bat wings and a tail. Yeah. Something's frightening, <laughs> yeah. Or, or like, what, was it alien, you know, alien where the, the alien pops out of the guy's chest? Terrible. <laughs> uh, that's like a whole different type of uh, <laughs> special right there. Yeah, that's not exactly the same uh, kind of sentiment. Oh, wait, wait. Anyway, yeah, we should just be grateful for the experiences of motherhood when they come, because anybody can have experiences where they influence somebody's life for good. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. And yeah. we should cherish them and love them and not be sad when they end, because... We will have learned something valuable that we can take with us for the rest of our lives. Yep. Yeah. How about, how about another person? Do you know Lily Abru? I don't know, but... Lily Abru, where does she live? I don't even know. But she uh, does things that are based in music, largely. And she has meetings... Uh, Online meetings regularly. Lily Abreu. Where is she? Where are you, Lily? She's an interesting lady. Uh oh. Um, yeah, she has a thing called self advocacy Boy voices. And she does um, concerts and everything she does is accessible to people. And she actively reaches out to people with uh, newer divergent types of people. Wow, that's yeah. good. We should all be reaching out to each other and educating the world a little more. Yep. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm just looking for people like that. 
They're all well, that's good. Why don't you email me the list? Because if it's not written down somewhere, I'll forget. I don't have me that too. trait of a memory. I'm exactly that way myself. Yeah, I'll leave my email in the chat and you can send me a nice email. How about that? I shall. Or I could post it on your page or whatever. I'll figure it you out. Heather, Heather Cameron. Okay. You can do both. Yep. There you go. But yeah. let's not be afraid to have meaningful life experiences, including being an influence. Yeah, but Anthony's getting tired, I think, because his Eastern time is he's in New York. It gets he gets very tired. So we try not to have long meetings for him. No, yeah, Anthony. I have, I have to get ready for Mother's Day. Oh, wait. Well, Anthony he's is got a very big Italian family that he has to cook. Oh, lots of beautiful stop food. it, you. <laughs> why are you why are you that written down there as Kronos? My my alter ego, my other self, if you will. Oh, that's a Greek god, right? Kronos? He is a Greek god, very muscly. <laughs> okay. Oh, very good, Don. Very good. Very good. Caught, on, caught on to that. Yeah, there you go. He has a what's thing it like being a god? He has a thing where of he's called Captain Kronos. Time draining. Oh, yeah, that's right. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, so let's not be afraid to have life experiences that allow us to help and influence others for good yes. and cherish them and not be sad when they're over because they'll influence us for good and help us to grow into better individuals. Okay, there you go. All righty. Well, well, it's about 20 but let's let's on. let let the Greek god go to bed. What do you think? Well, let's end the meeting, and then you and I can email on our own. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, reach well, out well, thanks for coming here, Don. Huh? It's been a pleasure having you. Yeah, it's a pleasure being here. Yes, it's been nice to meet a new face. It's wonderful to have you. Please come yes. back and bring friends. But, yeah. There. Yeah. That's. You know, I, I'm 71 years old, so I've retired. So I get to do the thing that I love to do more than anything else. Which is? And, th and this is it. Oh. Yeah. We, we're so glad to have you. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, good night, buddy. See good you all night. next time. Good night. It was good to I'm have you. Hope her. you enjoyed yourself. Oh, she can't yeah. do that. Th oh, well. <laughs> no, I can't. All right. I can try. Thank you for coming to tonight's meeting. Live long and prosper. <laughs>